everyone, bonjour tout le monde. I am Ariane Arsenault, uh, owner of La Fée de la Mer, handmade soaps in the Magdalene Islands, Quebec, Canada. Today is my second review video for the soap equipment uh, equipment <laughs> that I received. We have a brand deal, so they supplied me with free equipment for me to test and review in exchange for videos. So today I will be reviewing the large uh, pot tipper and my pro molds. I am making my sand dune soap that is made with local sand from the Magdalen Island. So this is a really exfoliating soap. It also contains locally harvested kelp, um, red cliff clay, local beeswax from our local beekeeper. It smells delightful and just like honey. We have essential oils of lavender, basil, and cinnamon. These are from Plants Power, and I purchased these. This is not a paid promotion. And I'm also including in my base oil, coconut, um, olive oil, the beeswax, as I mentioned, jojoba oil, and palm done right. Uh, palm done right is actually palm oil that is organic, sustainable, and it's the happy side of palm oil. Many soap makers choose to stay away from palm oil because of the deforestation and the animals that are being killed in Malaysia, Indonesia, and other parts of the world where palm is being grown. Um, palm done right makes sure that everything is done sustainably and that farmers uh, do the work and not machines and chemicals. The animals are respected and it is a good palm oil that is fair trade, sustainable and organic. If you want to learn more about Palm Done Right, please click the link below, go to their YouTube channel or their website and they will give you all of the information. So let's switch to the equipment and see what I'm going to be doing today. This is my new pot tipper. It will be able to hold my four batches into it and it is um, a pot tipper so you can actually pour it um, using the handle. I'm on the wrong side right now but it's for video purposes so I'm just going to tighten the nut so that it doesn't swing when I put my hot oils into it. Here are my pro molds. So I have a double pro mold and I have these two that are single blocks. Uh, I asked these to be custom made for me because I have a bad back and I wanted to be able to move these around easier but I'm going to test pouring my soap in the double side and also in the single block molds. The reason that I am making such a large batch of our sand dune soap um, is because I, I contacted a company from Quebec, it's a French Canadian company called Folle d'ici et boîte écolo, which means uh, crazy about here, ecological boxes, and they are a seasonal subscription, so it's four boxes a year of handmade products from Quebec. So if you would like to subscribe and discover other handmade products, including my soap for their summer box, I will leave all of the links down below in the description box up first so that you can subscribe and discover some amazing products. This is my first box of Palm Done Right that I'm using. Usually uh, when I bought my organic palm oil in the past, it came in a drum. So I'm gonna attempt to open it and see how easily it comes out of the bag. Pretty easy, so. This just kind of like uh, detaches from the bag. And I need a pretty large amount for my um, big batch of soap. And one block is 15 kilos. So because I need a little bit over 11 kilos, probably gonna cut it like right here. This cuts just like butter, this is amazing. Cool, all right. And here's my coconut oil. It is already pre-mixed with my beeswax that has been melted uh, previously because beeswax needs a little help to melt. It's easier to melt it with an oil or butter. And coconut oil is just perfect for this. Whenever I melt my melt and pour in a stock pot, melt and pour being another type of soap that I make, um, I like to just put my stock pot on top of the block, just kind of push it in. Then I'm gonna put my hand under the block and flip it over, just like this. And there we go, we have the palm oil in the stock pot. So I need just like a little over 100 extra grams. I was pretty on point. 
So I'm just gonna cut some palm oil and add it until I have the amount that I need. I also have quite a little bit of olive oil to add to my batch. So I'm gonna start portioning it out. <laughs> Next on the list is the jojoba oil, which is actually a liquid wax, uh, vegetable based. Here is part of my palm oil. And one of the things I like already like about um, the palm done right blocks is that it's actually a shortening of palm oil that's already been whipped. Um, typically, when you receive a drum of palm oil, it needs to be melted down because all of the fatty acids um, don't, like some of them sink to the bottom and others rise to the top of the drum uh, when they re-solidify. So a drum would need to be melted down, stirred back up, and then pumped out into a di a different batches of soap. With palm done right, the shortening is already whipped and comes in blocks, so you don't need to melt it down and re-whip it or remix it before adding to your soap. It's like a consistent block of palm oil, which is great for soap makers. Um, while we're waiting for the last little bit of palm oil to melt, I just wanted to show you how I prepared my molds. So these are big and deep block molds and they need to be lined. This is a release paper that I got with my soap equipment. Um, and I cut squares for the bottom and then I calculated the length I needed and I applied it. So I stuck it to um, the molds using coconut oil as glue and with a scraper I just went all the way around so that my mold uh, is perfectly lined because it is really adhering to the sides of the mold. Now also I have these unrolling dollies so that I can easily move them around when I'm done pouring. And once, once I'm, I pour, I will insulate them with these uh, insulation uh, blankets because we are in Canada and it is still really cold and raining and snowing and hailing outside today. So we need to, the soap to be nicely insulated uh, after it is poured until it is cut. I have to tell you, I am a little intimidated of uh, using this pot tipper with such a large batch of soap in it for the first time, I decided to call him Frank and to give it a name so that it would maybe be um, less intimidating. But anyways, <laughs> hopefully everything will go fine. And uh, I've looked at so many videos from my friend Joanna. Uh, she has a YouTube channel called The Soap Gal and she makes large scale production handmade soap. And she uses many of the equipment that I'm using today, but in the even like higher production production grade. So uh, check out her channel; it's really useful. And we're also friends. We met last year at the Handcrafted Soap and Cosmetics Guild annual conference, and she has answered so many of my questions when I was getting ready to make my first batch using this larger scale equipment. I can't thank you enough, Joanna. Thank you. I will now add my essential oil blend and it smells just like a cinnamon roll. This contains just a little bit of cinnamon blended with the lavender and the basil, but cinnamon is a really potent uh, essential oil and so it takes over the rest. It is also a potential skin sensitizer, so we always use it below 0.2%. But it smells so good. Yum. Hold your breath with me, guys, because we, and I have an assistant today, and we are going to make this huge batch of soap, and I'm like so nervous. I shouldn't be, I know. I'm just a scaredy cat. Here is the lye water, and this is the biggest lye water container I've ever made. <laughs> and I will be um, demonstrating the lye tank and the oil tank later but it was just too much for right now for my first tryout and I just wanted to test the pot tipper and the pro molds. So, <laughs> okay, let's pour this in. You better not tilt. <laughs> and I'm gonna get all of that lime water in there because we've calculated it precisely. And I'm gonna now take my big KitchenAid Immersion Blender. I don't know if you remember, but I used it in a video last year. I don't use it often because it's a really big one. So when I'm 
doing right now is I'm trying to reach light emulsification. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm sorry guys. This is the biggest batch of soap I've made in a single stock pot. I've made 700 soap in the same day, but it was all in smaller individual batches. I'm happy I have this big stick blender because with a small one, haha, <laughs> it would be quite difficult. Okay, so I'm gonna take my pitcher and just put my um, stick blender in it so that I can set it aside safely. And now my assistant is gonna come with the stock pot because we're doing a huge in the pot swirl today because why make life simple when we can make it a little bit more complicated. So come closer, come closer, and we're gonna start pouring the soap. Oh. Okay, good. So you maybe you can see, but there's a piece of uh, plexiglass in my stock pot and it's keeping the soap from splattering everywhere. Okay, I'm gonna lift this back up. Just, oh my gosh, what a clean pour. You can set it on the bench. This gave a really clean pour. I had no drips at all because of the curved, uh, the way the stock pot is curved. So now what I'm gonna do, so I'm gonna add the salt, not the salt, the sand and the kelp and keep a little bit for this side. So in this stock pot is all of my, most of my sand. Yeah. And here is the red cliff clay that will be coloring this batch. So uh, we just cleaned the soap slide and I call this a soap slide. Most companies uh, provide big stainless steel level. I didn't get one so I just like cut a piece of plexi plexiglass and this is how I catch my soap better. And now I'm gonna take my big immersion blender back and start blending the sand. And when making um, this soap, I try and reach a medium trace because I want the sand to stay suspended in the mix. And also when pouring in block molds like this, there's no like silicone joints or lining to keep it from leaking. And you need to pour at a medium trace in order for uh, your soap not to leak out of your molds. So if you've never seen a soap video and this is your first time, well, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe. But um, so when I talk about trace, it's this time when the soap batter, when you drizzle it on top, it leaves a trail. So this is called trace. And soap is uh, created by mixing an acid or a mix of acids, which are oils and butters. They are considered acids on uh, the pH chart. And then you would be mixing uh, acids with a base, which is the sodium hydroxide that we d dissolve in water, water being a solvent. And then by adding the lye water to the oils, it creates a sodium, a salt, which is the soap. And now that this is all nicely mixed, I can see the sand is very well suspended uh, into my mix. I'm gonna go ahead and mix my smaller stock pot. And this is actually the stock pot that I use in my regular batches. So, and it's more full than it usually is. <laughs> okay, so. We have a nice texture in both stock pots. I'm just gonna clean this up just a little, just the outside. You never put a spatula, a finger, or a hand in the shaft uh, or in the blender part of the immersion blender. My biggest in the pot swirl ever. <laughs> Okay. Oh my gosh, that was so much fun. Okay, I'm just gonna give one pass around. 
with my tiny spatula into this a big soup or in two passes around. Okay, just to swirl the soap a little bit. Because my mold is on a dolly, I can bring it really, really, really close to my pot tipper. <laughs> wow, this is absolutely awesome and beautiful. very slowly right here and over again wow My stress level is slowly lowering and I'm feeling pretty good about myself right now. This is awesome. And now this is almost empty and I'm gonna take my big squidgy and go scrape all around of my mold. And again, I would like to thank Joanna from The Soap Gal for giving me this trick. And I got this squidgy mold <laughs> months ago and I'm using it for the first time finally I'm just scraping all of the soap out and this goes so much faster than using just a smaller spatula okay so I got most of everything out I'm gonna take my spatula just for the little corners that the squidgy can't get so this recipe that we made today is four times the size of my normal recipe and it should give me about 380 soaps when I cut these hopefully tomorrow um, I'll keep you guys posted on that Okay, we did it. I did it. The molds are full. I mean, I'm gonna just uh, put this on top. Now, I didn't assemble these as the instructions said, but it's, it's 22 degrees inside. Um, I think it's not that bad. I'm just gonna sit this on top like this, and I also have another one that I'm gonna lay there, um, and I will assemble these um, warming blankets later on. Thank you so much for watching part one uh, of this video. Part two will be actually on molding and cutting. Hopefully everything will go great. Um, my impressions so far, well I think you've um, seen me go through the process. I decided to film my first trial so that you would have my, you know, my real live impressions. Um, so you can see that I was a little nervous, that it was challenging for me. Um, but it went, went, everything went super smoothly, super nice. I also used a soap formula that I've been making for over 15 years and I know how it behaves and I knew it was not gonna accelerate on me. Um, so if you ever get this type of equipment, try, start with a tried and true formula that you know um, you're comfortable with. Maneuvering the pot tipper was so easy. I had no heavy liftings to do, so my back was happy. Um, the pouring was so fluid, everything was really, really great. And um, one of the molds leaked a little bit, but I think uh, that's normal, it happens sometimes. But it was just a little bit, and we will see tomorrow um, what came out of the mold. But the two single block molds, no leak shows today. Uh, it was only the other one that had a little bit of a leak. but. Um, overall, everything was really great. 
I'm feeling good. I'm feeling pretty proud of myself right now. And I will see you very soon. And the part two review um, of this uh, two-part video of making and then cutting soap using Soap Equipment's Pot Tipper and the Pro Molds. Thank you.